Hi there again, uh, Peter here from the festival team. I'm here with Daniel Hardin, the writer and director of Dinner with Mum. Daniel, thanks so much for joining us. No problem. So this short film um, that played yesterday at the festival is up for quite a few awards here, three in fact. So best short film, best director and best actress. So congratulations thanks. Daniel and on behalf of the rest of the team I'm sure you'll accept our uh, gratitude for you being here and for the, for the, for the film. Um, all of us in the team are really big fans of this, uh, this film. We received, um, as I was mentioning to you earlier, a few films on this theme. Um, but this film did things in a very creative way, I thought, um, that stood it apart from some of the other things, some of the things you did as a director in particular. Um, first of all, before we get into that, can you just give us a brief premise of what the film Dinner With Mum is about? Yeah, it's, um, I tried to be brief. Uh, it's a story about a mum and a daughter attempting to have dinner uh, in which time quickly gets away from them, let's say. Mm. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's shot in a single location. In yep. Yeah, one location. But you do some very interesting things, I thought, with time mm -hmm. and with the cast. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And makeup. And makeup, makeup. Yes. That always kind of seems to get forgotten about because I think yes. it's quite subtle what happens. Yes. With it. Uh, also, I think in fairness, I think makeup um, would you did sort of expect that to happen. Yeah, true. In this type of film, but for me, some of the really interesting parts were some of the time shifts, which were very uh, dramatic and sudden and quite jarring, but in a good way mm -hmm. because it was effective in what you were trying to. Um, portray. Yes. Um, where did the inspiration to write this film come from? Um, I'm quite fortunate and the subject matter has never actually affected me personally uh, but I, I made a film at uni called Stranger about 10 years ago which I never quite felt like I nailed and it's, it's, slight, it's a similar premise but a different story but um, what I didn't like about the original film I made is that I, I kind of wasn't good technically to make, or as good technically as a filmmaker to make that film. So I think it was, it's been niggling at me for a long time that I could do things visually um, and with props and with cast and with time jumps mm. that this subject matter kind of just afforded me the opportunity to kind of play around with all those elements to tell a story, I guess. Mm. Um, and I, so, uh, yeah, I, I guess the idea just, it just, it came one day and I, I, like I said, I've been toying with it for a long time but never knowing what to do with it. Mm. Um, all those elements because I, I typically I'm, I'm quite a heavy script writer I do a lot of dialogue typically in my script so I was looking for an idea that I felt like I could tell visually without much dialogue and I felt like when I had this idea mm. uh, it kind of made sense that you could almost do it no dialogue but mm. obviously little bits here and there yeah um, so if there's any inspiration I would probably say it was that mm. it's an idea 10 years in in, in thought mm. okay so what's your history as a filmmaker how did you begin well, um, I actually grew up in Greys, which isn't too far from here, uh, starting off as an electrical engineer at the power station in Littlebrook, which mm. has now been demolished. So obviously that wasn't my life ambition, and when that kind of went sour, um, I kind of had no choice but to do what I wanted to do with my life, which has always been film. I've, I've been an avid film lover since I can remember watching films two or three times a day for as, yeah, for as long as I can remember. So. Um, ten years ago I moved to Brighton and studied at Sussex um, and then stayed on there and just kind of persevered being my own independent company, making little short films here and there, doing other bits and pieces and kind of just slowly building uh, over my 20s which was mm. quite tough because yeah there's not much money in short filmmaking but um, and now and now yeah now I make I still continue to make short films but yeah slowly progressing I think as a filmmaker and um, but yeah, still, still the aim to make a feature film pretty right. soon, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But no, still, still making little short films for myself. Mm. So your process as a writer then was this script something that came to you very quickly, or was it something that was developed over time? Was it something that you maybe wrote a while back and you came back to it? Um, how did it? How no, did it? Th with this one, it was literally an afternoon. Uh, as soon as I had the idea, um, I sat down and wrote it, and it pretty much was what we shot. I think I changed, I changed the name from the character's name to Mum, 
in one of the scripts and maybe one line of dialogue, but that was pretty much what we shot was the first draft. Mm. Um, a couple of things changed on the day, as they always do, with, with rehearsals and kind of blocking and things, and right. perhaps things I imagined differently, but no, pretty much an afternoon, I would say, it was written. Because it's only six pages, and right. mm. uh, like I said to you before, the idea pretty much came to me in full. Mm. Once I had that concept of what was going to happen, then it was just a matter of yeah. writing it. And um, sometimes they happen differently. Sometimes you have to obviously mm. think about it and work on it. But no, I was quite fortunate in this one. Mm. Pretty much came to me fully formed. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so how long did the shoot take? And what were some of your biggest challenges on set? Uh, it, was, it was two days. We shot over two days. Um, if I remember, it was probably a Monday and a Tuesday, so there was no gaps. It was we, we kept in the location for two days. Yes. Um, I guess the, the biggest challenge was making sure we did the script justice, because I think a lot of people read the script and enjoyed it, which is quite rare for me, not because <laughs> the idea is not very good, it's just I don't think scripts typically should be read as a finished piece, because obviously you're adding visuals to it. But a lot of people actually really liked the script. I think my partner even cried at it. So I think the biggest challenge for me was making sure that I did the script justice, mm. which added pressure. At least it felt like it added pressure to me and what I was doing on the day, because obviously if I then made a film that didn't live up to what people thought the script was going to be, then I would have failed. But um, yeah. I kind of feel like we did a good job. So I guess that's every filmmaker's challenge, right, is to do the script justice. Yeah. But other than that, I think it was quite easy, if I'm allowed to say that, just because we were following the script. Mm. Uh, the actors were great, the makeup was great, the help I had was great. So it was quite an easy shoot, really. Um, and I tried to keep it quite light and, and fun, just because of the subject matter being quite heavy and dark. So I quite enjoyed it, actually, which, again, is, is quite rare, I think, on, on short films, because the budget restraints normally mean that you're doing about 10 jobs mm. and you're running around like a headless chicken, which I probably still was, but less so than I would do normally. Probably. No, it's really good to hear that you actually had an enjoyable experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Probably the most <coughs> I've had on a short film, I would say. And the one location helps. Right. Because you're not having to think to yourself, well, at one o'clock we've got to leave and go somewhere else and mm -hmm. move here and go there and reset up. It was like once we were in that house and pretty much the three sections, four sections of that house, mm -hmm. we were just there to, act, to kind of have fun with the script and, and let the actors act, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So. Great. Yeah. I want to get on to the acting in a minute. Um, first of all, how was this film funded? How did you raise funds for it? Uh, was it easy? Was it hard? Self-funded. Right. So um, it was a matter of working. Uh, if I try and think back, I think I'd just finished a feature, editing a feature, uh, in which I had a, a little bit of savings from that, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was self-funded. All, all my films are, are typically self-funded. Um, so in that respect, it was quite easy. <laughs> uh, and so, but the, the crew was really small. I, I practically did most of the key roles myself, apart from makeup and the acting right. and the AD, like I said, I had help with. So it was quite a small budget um, to what is probably quite typical for a short film. So, um, yeah. So, um, casting. Mm -hmm. uh, Meryl Griffiths plays mum. She is absolutely superb. As I said earlier, we've nominated her uh, amongst our best actress category this year, which in my opinion, it's the strongest category in the, in the festival this year. Absolutely, all the entries are fantastic, and she's well deserving in that I category. I think so, yeah. She's how, did you, how did you cast her? How did you work with her on set? Well, I'd worked with Meryl before uh, in a completely different role uh, in a short film I made about five years ago, ago called uh, The Missing Hand, in which she played a... Uh, how, to, how to describe this woman? Um, Strong-willed property developer okay who yeah so it's very yeah, very it's different, different. Yep. very different mm -hmm. to, to what she plays in in this film but i can kind of remember thinking that she had quite a lot of character to her and charisma just as a person so when i i, I probably wrote dinner with what mum dinner with one i i probably wrote dinner with mum with her in mind uh, just because I wanted the character to have so much life to begin with mm. and to almost feel like this woman didn't deserve to have what happens to her happen yeah. to her. Yeah. Uh, so there's qu that's quite a contrast then between who you see at the beginning and who you see at the end. So I was quite confident that Meryl would be able to do the version of Mum that we see at the beginning. Mm. Um, and then it was just a matter of kind of letting her 
do her own research and her own character development character development and where she felt like the character was going to go and I think she had experience I think maybe her mum or her dad had a similar condition mm -hmm. so I think she drew a, a lot on that oh, and okay. um, working with her on set I, I remember having the impression that I didn't really do much but people have told me since that I did but I think it was just a matter of kind of keeping Meryl um, focused on where we were in that part of the story because it happens really quickly in a short space of time mm -hmm. is essentially like we were making probably four or five short films uh, that's at least how I treated it. So it was just making sure she knew where we were and at what stage of the story um, she needed to be. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I, 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 my, my, director story, my directorial style was to kind of, if you cast right, you just stand out of their way and let them do their thing and make sure the camera's focused and it's on and, and let them do their thing. So I think Meryl's very well deserved of being nominated. I think she's great. And, Without, well, yeah, without her, uh, and I still think Link, uh, Lucy, Lucy Jane Quinlan, who plays the daughter, is, is kind of like the young sung hero a little bit, because without her, I don't think Meryl would have had a sounding board for the performance that she gave, but obviously Meryl takes the plaudits because she's the, the focus, but I think, yeah, without Lucy and the performance she gave, which is much more understated, uh, I don't think that relationship would have worked as well, so I think it's, it's, a, it's a nomination probably for both of them as opposed to just Meryl, but obviously... Meryl's great as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, this film then, what's your plans for it? Are you planning to go to other festivals or what's, or have you done festivals? What's the trajectory of this film? Yeah, it's probably, the, the festival run's probably winding up now. Uh, I think the last, it's been doing it for about the last year, I would say, and the last festival we hear back from is September, so where are we now? August, so next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it and then it's done. I, I made it about two years ago, uh, and it, it took me quite a while to edit because I was doing other things. So, the festival run started last year, so it's just winding up, um, and then it will just be available online just for people to watch. Um, that's kind of what I do. It's just I, I don't plan on anything more than that. But I think people have advised that I should maybe send it to charities uh, to be used mm -hmm. if they want to, which I might do. I think. Um, Dementia UK have expressed an interest in, in using it, but I think they, yeah. they hesitated because of COVID and didn't really want to kind of push anything like that at the moment. So maybe that's something I'll look at uh, in September. But no, otherwise it'll just go online and hope that people uh, can watch it at yeah. home. I really Netflix. think people definitely should check it out. Me now. too. About now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Daniel, what's next for you, filmmaking wise? What have you got? What's, what are you thinking coming up? Obviously there's some challenges in the way, we understand that. Yeah. What are your plans? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm in that stage now of deciding what to do next, uh, which is a privileged position to be in. Um, I'm just trying to decide, yeah, what, what I want to do and, and what I kind of want to commit my time to doing. The, fe the features, like I said to you earlier, the feature is always there in the background, but because I self-fund mm. and don't really have the means to get funding from, from um, elsewhere, I have to really make sure that what I spend my money on is something that I actually am committed to. So I'm just waiting for an idea really to really jump out at me. Uh, so I write loads. I, I've written a ton yeah, of scripts over. Yeah, writer. Yeah, yeah uh, probably too much. So <laughs> I've, I've written tons over lockdown, which was right. great for me. Mm. Uh, but none of them yet have kind of jumped out at me as the one I need to make, which Dinner, Dinner with Mum did. So okay. as soon as I wrote that, I knew yeah. I've got to make this. Mm. So I'm kind of still waiting to see which one uh, jumps out at me but I, I work full time as a filmmaker so I'm not in any rush right. to kind of make a short film uh, because it's what I do pretty much Monday to Friday mm. uh, and, and most weekends so yeah like I said I'm just kind of waiting to see what the next idea I can't um, I can't stop thinking about mm. so over lockdown you mentioned there you've done a lot of writing have you found that therapeutic have you found that a good distraction what how have you uh my relationship with writing is probably neither of those things okay uh it's, it's almost like a necessity right and it's okay. quite stressful uh but obviously quite fun at the same time uh i just kept writing just kept writing 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 and you hope or at least i did that something good comes of it and i'm not too sure that it did yet but then, then like maybe I had to write 10 or 15 short films to get to dinner with mum and that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I've got another idea in the back of my head which I'm a bit gutted about because I haven't got time to write it now. Uh, but maybe I needed to write all that over lockdown in order to eventually get to this idea. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't call it therapeutic either. 
<laughs> especially when it goes wrong. Right. Okay. Uh, it's great when it goes right. Like Dinner with Mum was was enjoyable to write because it was just there on the pages as, as I finished it. And sometimes you get great ideas and you try to write them, and for whatever reason they don't quite translate that well onto page. And then you got to go back and kind of work out where it went wrong and where perhaps you made a decision in the writing that mm. led you off uh, off on a tangent. So. It, 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 it mixes, I think. Sometimes it's that, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's stressful. Yeah. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't. Uh, so it just kind of depends. Great. Uh, I really look forward to whatever you, you might bring in the future to the festival. Thanks. And thanks so much for joining us today, Daniel. No problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me.